on the coast of Chile 72 million years ago, an unusual dinosaur is trotting out onto the sandy beaches. Standing out from the white sand and black rocks is a female Stegorus. This small ankylosaur is unique in a few different ways. For one, she is tiny, only 1.8 meters long. Much more showing, however, is the massive armored tail she sports with thick, flat plates covering a mace-like weapon, perfect for shattering the bones of any predator foolish enough to attack her. She may seem out of place on a beach, as her kind is mostly found in forests, but she is here for a good reason. The armored Stegora searches through the low tide rock pools, looking for anything that will meet her needs. After half an hour of coming up empty-handed, she strikes gold. She finds a small fish that has been picked over by crabs, and upon finding it, picks it up, and swallows it. She is not a carnivore, or even an omnivore, but it's not the meat of the fish that she's after, it's the bones. Many herbivores will eat bones or chew them, in order to absorb the calcium and other minerals that they contain, that their regular diet of plants can't provide. Usually she can chew on the bones of dead dinosaurs, or even eggshells, but this individual lives close to the shore, and patrols the rock pools whenever she is in need of a vitamin boost. Though the meat can make her sick, and has in the past made her regurgitate the entire meal, overall this practice has kept her healthy. But she isn't the only scavenger present on the beach, and another dinosaur is watching her. Stalking her is a small species of Megaraptor. These nimble predators are common in the southern continents, and some have even risen to become top predators. This one is only four meters long, but after coming here to scavenge anything caught in the low tide, has decided to go after live prey. This juvenile has never hunted a Stegorus, having always been wary of them. But not only is the female distracted, he is also downwind of her. The only problem is he has to cover a considerable amount of open ground to get to her. Fortunately, Megaraptors are built for sprinting but he has to get close enough in order to flip her over. The Stegorus lowers her head to look into a low part of the rocks, obscuring her vision, so the predator takes his chance. He breaks into a sprint, leaving footsteps in the sand, bouncing off of rocks or weaving between them. He was gaining ground fast, and the Stegorus had no idea he was approaching, but it wasn't fast enough. And as the female pulled herself up, she just so happened to be looking in the advancing carnival's direction. The Megaraptor didn't stop, however. He kept running, not wanting to give up so close to his prey. The Stegorus instantly went on the defensive, facing her side to the attacker and raising her tail ready to swing. The Megaraptor didn't tackle the Stegorus or slash at it with his long finger claws. Instead, he leapt over the herbivore and swiveled his body midair, aiming to land on the Stegorus's opposite side and hopefully confuse the ankylosaur long enough to get in close and flip her over. But while in midair, as he twisted himself around, he saw the Stegorus was not as dumbstruck as he thought. The herbivore was tracking him as he flew through the air, and in response, she flexed her tail and swung it in the direction that the predator was going to land. The Megaraptor's feet hit the ground, but before he could react, the Stegorus's armored tail smashed into the hunter's left shin, completely breaking the tibia and the fibia in half. The Megaraptor suddenly found himself flat on his side, with the most excruciating pain he had ever felt coursing through his leg. Screaming, he looked down and saw the remains of his shattered leg hanging limply from a few torn muscles. Still screaming, he kicked his one good leg at the Stegorus that had crippled him, each movement only making the pain worse. The armored herbivore took a few steps back and examined her work. This Megaraptor would never walk again. Normally it would take days for a predator to die from an injury such as this, but in all likelihood, without the ability to move, the crippled hunter would drown once the tide comes back in. Satisfied she won't be attacked, the Stegorus turns her back on the pain-racked aggressor and walks away. Later that day, the female scratches her side against the trunk of a tree and prepares to go to sleep, hiding in the dense foliage. She may be heavily armed and armored, but she is still small, and there are predators much larger than the Megaraptor, 
that would see her as a decent meal. The best defense was not to be found in the first place, and in her forest home she felt safe and drifted off to sleep. Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we will be breaking down the Battle May Sankylosaur, Stegoros. Stegoros was first discovered in 2018 in Chile, was named in 2021, and its name means Roofed Tail. Though we only have the one skeleton, it is 80% complete, and is not only a brand new species, but an entire new genus, being the first named South American Ankylosaur, with all other species' fossils being fragmentary and unnamed. Stegoros lived between 75 and 71 million years ago in the late Cretaceous. For an ankylosaur, it is quite small, being between 1.8 and 2 meters long, standing around 50 centimeters tall, and weighing between 100 and 150 kilograms. Let's start with the most noticeable feature of Stegoros, its incredible tail. For an ankylosaur, Stegoros's tail is very short, containing no more than 26 caudal vertebra. The last 12 are covered by 7 pairs of large osteoderms, the last 5 of which are fused together to form a flat, connected structure. Only 13 of the tail vertebra are flexible in any way, with the rest being part of the large weapon at the end of the tail. Facing laterally with the body, the weapon has been compared to battle axes, or as I said, maces. But more accurately, it's been compared to a maku weedle. These were weapons used by many Mesopotamian cultures, and seems more appropriate as both come from South America. The shortened length of the tail is no doubt so the animal could hold it up and not drag it along the ground, and though it didn't have the reach of its relatives, it could damage larger areas and with the sharp edges, potentially cut through flesh, as well as cause incredible blunt force damage. Given the height of the animal, Stegoros may have swung its heavy tail in a wide arc, or in quick jabs to break the legs of larger predators, or outright kill smaller ones. The rest of the body seems very ankylosaurian, but with a few key differences. The legs of Stegoros are quite long and thin compared to most of its family, which have more short, stocky legs, meaning that perhaps it was a bit quicker on its feet. The body has less armored osteoderms than usual, with four lines of plates running from the neck down the body. The head was quite large for an ankylosaur, with a hooked beak in the front and leaf-shaped teeth in the back. Though it didn't have any osteoderms on the head, it did have hardened eye sockets and a thick eyebrow ridge. Stegoros represents an incredibly important discovery when it comes to ankylosaur evolution. Though they first appeared in the late Jurassic, they must have spread across the world when all continents were part of the supercontinent, Pangaea. And then once the continent splits into Laurasia in the north and Gondwana in the south, this family would evolve separately. Though we know plenty about the ankylosaurs in the north, very little has been found in the southern continents, that would become South America, Africa, Antarctica, Australia, and India. These species include Antarctopelta from Antarctica and Kumbarosaurus from Australia, both of which are known from limited remains. Thanks to the discovery of Stegoros, however, it has helped to fill in the gaps of this family, and a new group has been named for these southern ankylosaurs called Paraankylosauria. While previously seen as basal ankylosaurs, they are now shown to be a unique group that have evolved separately from their northern relatives. Which also means that Stegoros evolved its tail weapon completely independently from the northern ankylosaurs, a good example of convergent evolution. As you can see, Stegoros is an extremely important find, helped massively by the completeness of its skeleton. It has helped to piece together a major part of dinosaur history, and has actually brought new light on previously found species, for example, Antarctopelta has similar anatomy to Stegoros, and it has been suggested that it may have had the large, weapon-like tail as well. Though this is just a theory, as we only have 15% of Antarctopelta's skeleton. But still, a cool thought that Stegoros may not have been the only one with such a vicious tail weapon. So, Stegoros. A really unique-looking dinosaur that is far more than just another club tail. But what do you think of Stegoros, and which tail do you think would be best? 
the spikes of the stegosaurs, the armoured whips of the nodosaurs, the clubs of ankylosaurs, or the muckawedal of stegorus. What lesser known dinosaur would you like me to do a breakdown on next? And until then, please like, subscribe, share, and thank you for watching.